Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Dr. Kapiti's presentation. Today, topic of the presentation is irreversible enzyme inhibition. I'm going to discuss about the characteristics of irreversible inhibition process and then I'm going to give you few examples of three types of irreversible inhibitors including group specific reagents, reactive substrate analogs and suicide inhibitors. In irreversible enzyme inhibition process, the inhibitor binds tightly to a specific group or near the active site of the enzyme, often through covalent bond and dissociates very slowly from the target. Irreversible inhibitor changes chemical composition of the important amino acids required for enzyme activity. The inhibitor occupies or destroys the active site permanently. Irreversible inhibition cannot be reversed by the removal of excess inhibitor from the system by dialysis or dilution or by increasing the substrate concentration. Synthesis of new enzyme is the only option for the recovery from irreversible inhibition. There are mainly three types of irreversible inhibitors. Group specific reagents, reactive substrate analogs or affinity levels, suicide inhibitors or mechanism based inhibitors. Group specific reagents react with specific amino acid side chains present in the active side of the enzyme. They are used to find out the participating catalytic active groups such as thiol group of cysteine, hydroxyl group of serine. Few examples are iodoacetamide and iodoacetate as inhibitors of cysteine proteases, diisopropyl fluorophosphate as inhibitor of serine protease, NAD gases and pesticides as inhibitor of serine protease. Iodoacetate and iodoacetamide are irreversible inhibitors of all cysteine peptidases. Inhibition occurs due to alkylation of the catalytic cysteine residue. They bind covalently with the thiol group of cysteine so the protein cannot form disulfide bonds. They have frequently been used to inhibit glycolysis because these compounds are known for their ability to irreversibly inhibit the glycolytic enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Diisopropyl fluorophosphate is a serine protease inhibitor. It irreversibly inhibits biological systems by forming an enzyme inhibitor complex with a specific OH group of serine situated at the active sites of certain enzymes. Acetylcholinesterase is a cholinergic enzyme primarily found at postsynaptic neuromuscular junctions, junctions, especially in muscles and nerves. It immediately breaks down or hydrolyzes acetylcholine, which is a naturally occurring neurotransmitter, into choline and acetic acid. Acute exposure to diisopropyl fluorophosphate causes irreversible inhibition of acetylcholine studies activity, leading to various neurological dysfunctions. The peptide disease trypsin and chymotrypsin contain serine groups at the active site and they are also inhibited by diisopropyl fluorophosphate. This is the common structure of organophosphorus nerve agents and pesticides. These are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors that cause phosphorylation of the enzyme while losing the leaving group X. One example of nerve agents is serine and one example of pesticides is parathion. NARP gases and pesticides containing organophosphorus combine with serine residues in the enzyme acetylcholinesterase and inhibits enzyme activity. It may induce a cholinergic crisis in vivo and thus might lead to death. Reactive substrate analogs are structurally similar to the substrate of the enzyme that can covalently bind to the active site and therefore more specific than group specific reagents. TPCK or n paratocyl l phenylalanine fluoromethyl ketone inhibits the serine protease that is alpha chymotrypsin. 
TPCK has been shown to specifically alkylate the histidine 57 moiety in the active center of chymotrypsin and chymotrypsin like serine proteases. Substrate of chymotrypsin is polypeptides that means amino acids attached through peptide bonds. TPCK is a substrate analog. In this case, the phenylalanine part of the reagent confers specificity for chymotrypsin while the chloromethyl ketone provides chemical reactivity. Although chymotrypsin is a serine protease, TPCK does not interact with the active site serine residue but instead alkylates the histidine residue that is part of the catalytic trait. Suicide inhibitors are also known as mechanism based inhibitors. They bind to the enzyme as a substrate and is processed by a normal catalytic mechanism that generates a chemically reactive intermediate that inactivates the enzyme through covalent modification. Few examples are allopurinol as xanthine oxidase inhibitor, penicillin as transpeptidase inhibitor, and aspirin as cyclooxygenase suicide inhibitor. Gout is a type of arthritis in which uric acid builds up in the joints. Uric acid is synthesized by xanthine oxidase enzyme naturally in the body from the substrates hypoxanthine and xanthine. Allopurinol is used to treat gout in order to reduce uric acid production by inhibiting the action of xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase commits suicide by initially activating allopurinol into oxypurinol which is a transition state analog which binds very tightly to the molybdenum sulfide complex at the active site of the enzyme xanthine oxidase. In this way, irreversible suicide inhibition is occurred by oxypurinol. Cyclooxygenase is shortly known as COX. COX-1 and COX-2 are bifunctional enzymes that carry out two sequential reactions in uh, specially distinct but mechanistically coupled active sites. Those are the double di dioxygenation of arachidonic acid to prostaglandin G2 that means PGG2 and the reduction of PGG2 to PGH2. Arachidonic acid oxygenation occurs in the cyclooxygenase active site and PGG2 reduction occurs in the peroxidase active site. PGH2 diffuses from the COX proteins and is transferred by different tissue specific isomerases to produce prostaglandins and thromboxane. Aspirin irreversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase by acetylation of an amino acid serine residue and thus blocks the subsequent biosynthesis of prostaglandins and thromboxane. Aspirin irreversibly inactivates COX-1 whereas in case of COX-2, aspirin turns off its ability to generate prostaglandins but switches on its capacity to produce novel protective lipid mediators. Penicillin is an irreversible suicide inhibitor of transpeptidase enzyme which is required for the bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. Before I am going to discuss about the action mechanism of penicillin, let us know about the cell wall biosynthesis process in short. The cell wall of bacteria consists mainly of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is composed of cross-linked chains of peptidoglycan monomers that means NAG, NAM and pentapeptide. In a, pept uh, in a peptidoglycan monomer of E. coli, the pentapeptide coming of the NAM is composed of amino acids, L-alanine, D-glutamic acid, mesodiaminopimelic acid and 2 alanines. Transglycosylase enzymes join these monomers to form chains. Transpeptidase enzymes then cross-link the chains to provide strength to the cell wall and enable the bacterium to resist osmotic lysis. Let's know the cross-linking mechanism by transpeptidase. The peptide cross-link forms by 
formation of a short peptide interbreeze consisting of five glycines. In the process, the terminal D-alanine is cleaved from the pentapeptide to form a tetrapeptide in the peptidoglycan. In this way, cross-linking is occurred in the cell wall of bacteria by the action of transpeptidase enzyme. Let's know the mode of action of penicillin as irreversible suicide inhibitor. Penicillin and substrate bind covalently to the same active site serine in transpeptidase enzyme. Penicillin acts as a structural analog of D, uh, structural analog of the acyl D and anyl D alanine terminus of nascent bacterial cell wall. It consequently binds to and acetylates the active site of the enzyme that is serine to form an inactive penicilloyl enzyme. This is the inactive transpeptidase enzyme after binding with the penicillin. In this way, penicillin blocks the formation of the link between the tetrapeptide and the pentaglycine breeze making the cells leaky and fragile resulting in osmotic lysis and cell death. In this way, penicillin acts as irreversible suicide inhibitor for the cell wall synthesis of bacteria and acts as the antibiotic. Thank you very much for watching this video. In order to motivate me, kindly like, share and subscribe this channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications.